Oh, look, here you guys are getting ready to leave on the early dismissal day, not knowing that you'd have two more days off of school for snow. That's nice. Hope you guys enjoy those snow days. Uh, welcome to this week's episode of Library Picker. We're going to start this week in the classics section, and we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to tell you about books that are related in some way, and we'll start with The Count of Monte Cristo. The two books I'm going to show you right now are books about revenge. They are guys who have been wrongfully imprisoned for some reason, who eventually escape um, to seek revenge. This is a classic, The Count of Monte Cristo. Let's watch a little bit of the movie trailer for this one. In return for your help, I offer something priceless. The treasure of Monte Cristo. <laughs> than any man I have ever heard of. What do you want to buy? Revenge. This fall, I will change my identity. I shall become a count. Ladies and gentlemen, the Count of Monte Cristo. This is actually one of my favorite books, but this is a long book. Check it out. And the language is pretty thick. Um, but if you're up for something like that, give it a try. There's another book, though, that's more aimed at like the young adult segment, um, but it's the same kind of thing. It's in our action and suspense area, and you guys have probably heard of Artemis Fowl. It's by the same author. This one is called Airman. I've got a little bit of the book trailer for this one, too. It's pretty cool. Two great books about adventure and revenge. And actually, um, we actually have a copy of this in paperback on the grab-and-go shelf if you can't find it in the action and suspense area. Let's head back over to the classics. I've got two more books I want you to take a look at. Um, and these books have to do with exploring mysterious places. The Secret Garden was written in 1912. It's considered a classic. It's about a little girl who moves to a country manor, and she's exploring this walled-off garden and all the interesting mysterious stuff um, in this garden. There's something similar if we head over to our historical fiction section, and it's on one of the bottom shelves. The book is called The Romeo and Juliet Code, and in this one, a girl moves into this mysterious house with her uncle, and they get letters, these mysterious letters from her parents who are in another country, and she meets this guy, and they kind of strike a, a relationship, and they decide to figure out what's going on with her parents. So they go into her uncle's study and they find these letters. Um, the problem is they're written in code, so they decide they're going to crack the code in order to figure out what's going on. Two great books about exploring mysterious places and uh, this one about codes. Let's head over to an action and suspense area. We've been hitting this shelf a lot in the last few library pickers, but you know we've actually got two of the book that we're going to feature next. It's called On the Blue Comet. So I bought a stack of books a few weeks ago to um, save and at some point read to my son. And this is one of those books. Now, I'm a librarian. I have access to a lot of books. So you know if I buy a book, it's got to be good in some way. This is a time travel adventure um, that's set aboard trains. There's this kid who does model trains with his father in their basement. He witnesses some kind of crime and all of a sudden he's on this time travel adventure where he gets to meet a lot of funny um, historical people and very important historical people like Ronald Reagan. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. I got this video from one of our uh, video databases that you guys have access to. He also meets someone named Alfred Hitchcock. Have a quiet little motel when in fact it has now become known as the scene of the crime. Do you have a vacancy? Oh, we have 12 vacancies. He's known for a lot of really scary movies. So, um, On the Blue Comet, it also has some really cool illustrations. Here's an example. 
And people compare the illustrations in this book to illustrations by a famous American artist named Norman Rockwell. Um, now, if you're interested in learning more about Norman Rockwell, we have a book in the reading room that you might be interested in. Um, he's got some really great pictures of America um, in the 20th century. Um, you know what? There's another set of books that we're going to look at. One more that we'll look at in this video. Um, Grimm's Fairy Tales is like actually a really dark set of fairy tales. It's not all uh, Hansel and Gretel and stuff like that. It's scary stuff. We have a book in the short story collection, which is another book that I bought uh, to share with my son someday. It's in short stories here, and it's based on the Grimm's fairy tales, but it's an updated version. It's called A Tale Dark and Grim, and we have a trailer for this one if you want to take a look. In the darkest zones, one finds the brightest beauty, the most luminous wisdom, and the most blood. <laughs> Good God, that's horrible! Two children, all alone in a dark and grim tale. Once upon a time, fairy tales were awesome. The Tale Dark and Grim by Adam Gidwitz. Available online and in stores everywhere. That's actually the first line of the book. Um, Once upon a time, fairy tales were awesome. This is, a, like I said, a short story book, so that means there's a bunch of r stories in this book that are related, but they're short. So... Give these, this collection a try. It's pretty cool. That's it for this week's episode of Library Picker. Hope you get a chance to check some of these books out, and we'll see you next week.